What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today, I want to talk about finding big trends using the Gecko Trading Bot so that you maximize your profits. So, originally, I wasn't going to talk about big trends, and this is actually like a strategy I've written up、um, recently. But I was going to talk about another strategy that someone else has written up called Gecko TD Sequential. So, it's by Scoobix, and I think Hurley, these two are the Um, creators of this strat. So, this is a strategy that implements、uh, TD sequential. So, if you guys don't know what TD sequential is, you probably haven't heard of Tone Vase. So, Tone Vase is probably one of the more famous, I wouldn't say, or maybe infamous to some people, <laughs> crypto trader. He uses the TD to sequential indicator as his primary tool to determine when to get in and out of the market. So, It would have been awesome if、uh, this Gecko TD sequential strategy actually worked. Unfortunately, I'm just going to show you real quickly here. From what I saw, the latest push on this、um, strategy, it actually it doesn't seem like it's even completely done because I'm looking at it right now. This whole section to determine, maybe this is more like, I guess you would say, pseudo code in a sense to, show, to determine when to buy using TD sequential, when to buy and sell into the market. So let's just say this is、um, pseudo code here. The actual check function doesn't do anything. If you see it, it just basically it pulls in the information from the TD sequential indicator, which they also have written, and it just logs the info, and that's it. But if you actually look into the indicator, it actually also isn't quite finished yet because if you see the result, this is the result, this dot result. So normally, this dot result gets updated. By every candle, and then that update information is what your strategy will use to determine when to buy and sell. But for this particular indicator, this dot result is instantiated, but it actually doesn't get updated anywhere at any time. So you see that、uh, the update function, the update、uh, method right here, it doesn't actually update this dot result. It could be totally that I don't know how to use、uh, this strategy and indicator. I went on to the Discord channel to see if anyone is actually working on this, and so far I haven't got that response. So, I mean, I could be totally wrong, but this is, you know, if you guys are interested, you could definitely take a look at it. But from what my understanding is, this strategy and indicator doesn't quite work. I mean, I might even put some time into actually looking into this because it is interesting the, how this indicator works, and this is something that's not part of Gecko. So, it's always something that I want to build on top. So, anyway, on to today's topic though. So, big trends. How do you identify big trends and what it is, really, right? Let's go back in here and let's kind of describe what a big trend, what I consider a big trend is, anyway. So, something like this, where my issue with a simple RSI、um, lookup. So, something like this, right? You see,、uh, using RSI to buy, sell, maybe somewhere along the lines, this is hourly, obviously. I don't even use the hourly too much, it's on the trading purposes. But it probably is good to identify a bigger trend compared to the five minute chart. A hourly chart will show a general change in direction much、uh, more accurately than the five minute chart, which actually can have just minor changes over time. And even a five minute chart hits a overbought territory for RSI, it doesn't really mean much. It could still be like this stuff right here. This is this right here, this particular candle right here on the five minute chart, that's probably like way into the overbought territory. But in an hourly chart, it's still kind of underneath and below it. But my point is this though a big trend is usually where you see this right here. This is a good example, a perfect example. That's why I'm showing you guys this. So even in the hourly chart, which ha-、uh, shows a more、um, bigger trend overall, but like in here, this particular candle hit way into the overbought territory at 82. So anything above 70 is overbought. But this is just nothing. This look, if you sold here, you are making so little profit. You made maybe 4% if you actually sold at the peak. When we write the strategy, we write it actually close at the next candle, which fortunately the next candle didn't drop much. So you actually can、um, still make about 4% profit roughly. But if you actually bought and sold all the way up here, you will get like a 20 plus percent gain. I mean, even up to here, but normally you don't want to hold for that long. This is holding a seven day period. You don't want to hold that long on any particular coin. That's just、um, too much risk or too much beta. So, but look at here though. Just having it hold it for a little over a day, which is per- I'm perfectly fine with that. You made a 19% gain. But problem is, specifically with the RSI, if you use it as a buy sell, it's always going to screw up and miss the huge gains because you end up selling it here. Or even if you try to wait until it 
falls down here. You can hold until it falls back down. Hopefully that it actually gets a little bit more gain that way. Even though in this case you actually not much, you would lose some you would lose some significant gains from your four percent. Put it down to like maybe one or two percent gains. You have to nick, wait till the next uh, RSI peak, which what they call like a double peak, a double RSI peak. That's when you actually can see some more profit. And you actually want to hold on to that all the way through to maybe like here. But then that's the tricky part because after the double peak, you don't know when to actually sell. So, but no matter what, holding a double peak will at least triple, if not quadruple your gains. In this case, it's like more than quadruple your gains from like 4% to like 20%. So this is what I consider like a big trend. But what actually, what indicators do you actually use to actually identify this big trend and be able to profit from it? So this is where my strategy comes from, the big trend strategy. So let me go read this out to you guys. So this strategy scalps until a bull trend is identified. So ideally, this is what it's supposed to do. So um, I'm going back to the five minute chart here. So on the five minute chart, and I have other indicators I'll explain in a bit. So just looking at the RSI, ideally it would just scalp from this, like go from like the low to the high, even in this case it didn't do much and yet you <laughs> probably made some loss here, not probably a good way to show it off, but Point being, you want to go from the low to the high on the five minute chart to scalp essentially. And then when it finds a big trend, it's going to hold instead of just like, you know, buying and selling here, it's going to hold onto a waiting for a bigger trend and actually go, let, let the trend continue to finish out and sell it at a much higher level. So, how does it do that? Well, this is what it's going to do. It's like, first of all, you know, when it hits a stop loss of 1%, it's going to, you know, it's going to stop. It's going to wait until the DPO is greater than zero. And DPO is one of those things where if you guys don't know what the indicator is, you can look at yourself or I have written up a actually very detailed um, post on the DPO, but only my patrons uh, will have access to that. So if you guys want to know what the DPO is and how I use it, then you definitely have to be a, become a patron. But at the minimum, you guys can at least see that I'm using a DPO in here and it's a part of the strat. So you probably have to have some basic understanding of it. So in this particular strategy though, I'm using the DPO as a way to identify when to get back into the market. Because essentially after the stop loss, it won't come back into the market until DPO is above zero. So that is how the strategy works. So it hits a stop loss of 1%, it's going to be like, okay, there are probably going to be much bigger losses coming in, much more drops. So it's going to hold off on buying until the DPO is greater than zero. So again, as almost all my strategies I write this for the five minute chart so let's go into the buy for example the buy is actually relatively straightforward compared to my other strategies related to RSI it's uh, pretty much how it almost always works right so this is a scalping portion this strategy buys after RSI dips below 30 and recovers above it it will wait until it dips and then it recovers and then buy into it so in this particular one it's not a very good example it's probably gonna hit into the 1% stop loss but it also you know with the exception when RSI drops below 19.5 so it's based on your particular um, coin and trade pit. I will probably do a video on analyzing uh, RSI at some point down the line just to explain to you how to actually understand what kind of parameters you, can, you should set for each particular coin. So I mean, a normal backtesting should give you some idea, but it doesn't really do that because a lot of times I don't like backtesting is because it concentrates too much on the buy and sell. And that is never correct. Because in 2018, all, this, all the work I've done in 2018, the one thing I have learned from that experience is that the buy and sell on a back test is the, what you call like the perfect scenario, your dream trade setup. So that never happens in real life. And that's why I don't trust back tests, basically. So, but back test still gives you a good idea in terms of um, identifying levels, per se. Not so much the profit and losses that a back test really indicate highlights. So in this case here, it actually didn't drop below, actually it did, it did drop below 19.5. So 19.5 is just one of those things that I, I use actually, it's more for Ethereum. So this is Ethereum classic. So in this case it applied anyway, because it dropped below 19.5, meaning there was a severe drop and more drops ahead. And you know what? I didn't write the book on using RSI, but like I have used this indicator consistently long enough that I understand that that's what it is, right? In this case, it dropped below 19.5. So the strategy will not buy in here. And it's great because it, it didn't buy in here and it didn't and it didn't get killed over here. It didn't get crushed right here. <laughs> when Ethereum Classic dropped close to more than 3%, it 
within a five minute candle. <laughs> you know, it never suffered that ish, that problem because it never bought in here following that strategy. So again, this is, I didn't just pick this particular um, chart right here. I literally just brought up um, this chart with the proper indicators and that's it. So I didn't actually look for this, but then it just shows you that that particular um, setup does work, you know, not having a buy at a severe drop point. It doesn't always work, but it does happen to work in this particular case. And I've seen it enough that it happens to work at least, probably in my opinion, more than 50% of the time. So that's why I use it. That's pretty much just a way to um, identify buy points and the sell point is really what's important. So the sell point is, the sell strategy is this. This strategy then uses SMA 200 and SMA 200 times 1.01. So this is where the two lines are here. So the orange line is the regular uh, simple moving average, a 200 candle simple moving average. The green line is the value of the SMA by 0.01%. So the reason why I'm doing this is that when um, a particular coin just goes and hits a trend line right here, it hits the 200 SMA. All that really means is that there's a good chance it could get rejected. By having it go way above the SM, the 200 SMA, we know that it's actually hitting a a bullish trend, at least a temporary in a in a, in a five minute time frame, a bullish trend. So that doesn't really uh, change the overall course of the discussion here. That we're still in the bear trend, but that you know for that very short time frame, for that particular time period, you know let's say like maybe within this one day, it is hitting a bull trend. So if it hits a bull trend, we're going to hold. That's the idea. We're going to let it hold and ride through it for a little bit longer. But if it doesn't hit a bull trend, if it just like, you know, hits a 200 SMA, gets rejected, we're going to use our basic RSI 70, you know, overbought uh, situation as a sell point. So that's essentially the idea of using this. But let's just go over and read it very quickly. If it's greater than 200 SMA, sell as soon as the RSI starts falling after hitting 70. There's actually three scenarios here. So if it's greater than, that means it hit but it hasn't passed the 200 SMA times 1.01. It's gonna start falling. As soon as it starts falling, we'll sell it. So that's that's um, scenario one. Scenario two is if if it's less than 200 SMA, so it's really in a bearish trend, we're not gonna sell until it actually goes above the 200 SMA times 1.01 because we want to hold on to it until the, the bear trend switch to bull trend. So that's the idea for the second uh, second part. So, um, and then it will sell loss. So if current price less than buy price, sell. So essentially at this point, we just want to make sure that if we are going to um, play that strategy, we don't want to take huge losses. So that's number two. So number three, this is where you actually, the big trend as the strategy is called. <laughs> so if it's greater than SME 200 times 1.01, we have a big trend here. Wait till RSI falls below 70, then sell. So essentially, we're just gonna hold on to it for quite a bit of time. So in this particular case here, we're gonna hold on to it until it falls back down 70. So it's right over here. So, but because we hit a big trend already, it actually, even after it falls back below um, RSI 70, you still didn't lose much from the top because it's such a small drop from here to here because you were, we were in such a big gains mode the last, you know, I don't know, 15, 20 candles. So that even a drop from overbought territory into below 70 is actually, not a big drop, so you're actually making quite a bit of gains. There's different ways to play with this big trends. I mean, as I showed you guys before, you can always use the hourly instead as an idea to um, to identify really a, um, a bigger trend. But in this case here, yeah, I'm just using um, the SMA 200 times 1.01. It, that, that to me is a good way to tell. It's more like a accurate setup because you're not actually relying on two different time frames, which are always related. Time frames are always related. I find that using this strategy is a little bit less troublesome just because when you use a multiple time frame setup in um, Gecko anyway, the hourlies and the five minutes doesn't quite match up trade to trading view, and that's basically what we're relying on these days to confirm our trades. So again, the stop loss is 1% stop loss. After stop loss, wait till DPO goes above zero to enable buy. That's basically it you know um just gonna go over the code here this strategy is already on my repo so you guys can check it out play with it uh use own settings with regards to rsi dpo and sma so these are the ones i have set up here and i'm just going to cover specifically the check function to show you guys how it works so again the buy strategy is pretty simple it's just you know buy when rsi is greater than 19.5 
in the last 10 candles and also the previous candles is oversold and the current candle is greater than oversold so that's when you get in so and then once remember as i pointed out last time in the tips and tricks video once it buys we should just uh it should return here so that we don't actually try to continue the rest of this check function because once it falls into the if statement, we're just going to exit out because we already executed what we wanted to do. So we can exit out by using a return call, semicolon. But if it didn't do that, if it didn't fall into that if loop, then it has another buy scenario where it buys if the DPL is greater than zero and stop loss. So essentially, this is what happens is we identify the trend as coming back to a switching back to a bullish trend using the DPL. Uh, we can get into a buy situation here too. And then the cell portion, this cell, there's multiple. I mean, how many cell um, setups we have here? We're one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> so there's a lot of different cell setups. But I mean, like I said, there's, there's already three uh, cell setups that I mentioned earlier. And this is just implementing each of these uh, three different cell setups. One is like a scalping mode. The other one is, um, it's not really a cell, it's a cell over here. You see it. This one is just a, identifying the, tr the trend and making sure that and hoping that it switches from a bearish to a back to a bullish trend. It'll hold through like a neutral kind of pattern and not try to buy sell and be end up being uh, making minimal gains or worse, making um, making losses as it as it uh, trade through the neutral territory. So and then this is where you should make a profit where it actually uh, goes above the SME two hundred but starts to fall back down because it doesn't have enough strength to go above the SMA two hundred times one point zero one. So this is where you make profit on this particular setup, but not the big trends one. So the big trends one is here. So sell of current price is greater than SMA 200 times 1.01. And um, the previous candle was overbought and the current candle is actually a uh, less than overbought situation. So this is where the big trends occur. So this, we're supposed to make a large gain on, on this particular uh, sell setup. And the last one is a stop loss, simply that. So that's basically it. I haven't thoroughly backtested this strategy yet. Again, I don't really trust backtest these days in terms of uh, how much profit it can actually make compared to live trade. For me, it's more about like testing it live with a small amount, see if it actually is profitable. So if this makes multiple profitable trades, I consider it profitable. In fact, my strategy so far in 2019, having these small gains, actually more than one strategy have been uh, quite successful compared to 2018 when I was just relying on backtesting and having it fail miserably on me. You guys are definitely free to um, backtest this particular strategy and let me know if you guys think there's any problems with it. I'm always still constantly working on these strategy and that's the point. I mean, I'm probably going to be working on like four or five strategies that I'm really interested in and figuring out what works, what doesn't, and just gonna, you know, throw the ones that doesn't and share with you guys the ones that does. But at this point, I can't say big trends definitely work. I'm just saying that this is a, something that I build up in terms of a group of ideas that I put together and it should hopefully work, but definitely let me know in the comments below if it doesn't work. Even if it doesn't work, hopefully you guys can like get some ideas from this particular strategy and make your own and, and use the stuff that works for you. So that is my video for today. As always, I would appreciate it if you guys become a patron on my Patreon, patreon.com slash crypto49er. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. Peace out.